Hey everyone, Steve here. Hope you're doing great, staying healthy at home, and looking forward to a fun project because that's exactly what I have for you guys today. We're gonna to be creating basically any city in the world that you want, completely free and only using Blender. Let's get into it. Super thanks to the cool people over at Squarespace for sponsoring this video. Also, if you want to download the finished city file, I have it available over on the Patreon page for just a few dollars. Plus, you'll get access to all of the other files available on the channel. It's a great way to support the channel and get some cool perks in the process. So after my last video on creating 3D terrain using Google Maps, a lot of you guys requested an updated version of my cities tutorial. That's right, today we're going to be using Blender 2.8 and the updated, completely rewritten OpenStreetMap add-on to create basically any city you can think of in the world. It's pretty cool, guys. There's also a paid version of the OpenStreetMap add-on now that offers some cool improvements. You can actually get buildings imported with randomly generated textures already on them, as well as some extra details like trees and stuff added to your scenes. It might be worth checking out if you're interested in doing even more detailed cities. I'll put the link in the description. But today we're gonna to be doing everything completely free. We're gonna be using the OpenStreetMap data contributed by individuals. If you guys wanna to contribute to this, you can do so over on the OpenStreetMap website where you actually add data to the different areas of the map where there should be buildings and whatnot. I don't know, I've not never done it, but it sounds pretty cool. And I know it's all community driven. So if you guys are interested in creating some OpenStreetMap data yourself, go on, head over there. But without further ado, let's start rendering some cities in Blender. So before you get all Blender early, you'll have to download the add-on over on the Gumroad site for the OpenStreetMap add-on. I'll put a link in the description below. And as you can see here, you can download it for any price that you want to. So you can totally download it for just $0 and go ahead and use it for free. But if you want to give the developer that put a lot of work into creating this, a little bit of a tip, I'm sure he would appreciate that as well. So go ahead, get that downloaded. Once you have it downloaded, you're going to head over to Blender here. And over in the User Preferences, you're going to go to your Add-ons tab and click Install. Here you'll locate the downloaded zip file for that add-on. Go ahead and click it and choose install add-on. And then switching over to user installed add-ons, you can see the add-on installed here. Now after you've checked that box to make sure that the add-on is enabled, all you have to do here is give it a directory to store the downloaded OpenStreetMap data. So go ahead and choose a folder real quick for that. And then also you might want to create a Mapbox account here. You can click get it and go over to Mapbox and create a free account real quick. Basically you just need a free account and you can put an access token in and this allows you to download the satellite data data from Mapbox, which is more legal, I guess, than downloading it from Google Maps because there is some restrictions on that. So yeah, it's just a quick, easy to create free account and you'll get that access token that will allow you to use the satellite data inside of the Blender add-on here for OpenStreetMaps, which is really cool. So go ahead and do that. All right, so to bring up the add-on, it's just the N key on your keyboard and you'll see OSM at the bottom of your tabs here. You just wanna click on that and here you can see we have some settings in our add-on. So for starters, we can choose what city we want to import into Blender for the OpenStreetMap. And that is gonna be done using the select option right here at the very top. Click select, it will automatically open up your web browser. And here you can see we have a view of the map that we can basically select any chunk of and pick that city to be imported into Blender. Again, it's only gonna be more populated cities where people have contributed a lot of data. So for this tutorial, I actually took a chunk of city from San Francisco. So to do this, all you have to click is that little search box, start typing the city that you want to create. Here I'm just zooming in, I'm gonna pick a little corner of the city here. If you take too much of the city, it's actually gonna take a while to import and you really actually don't need too much city for this tutorial. So with that set up though, I'm just gonna click show selection rectangle, and then I can go ahead and adjust the size of this box to be the size of the city that I want to import. If you want a satellite view of the map here to kind of get a better representation of what buildings you're selecting, you can change that up in the corner here. Just choose Bing satellite. And then you can see we have a satellite view of the section of map that we're choosing. Then all you wanna do is go over and click copy to copy the coordinates right here of the map. And then if we jump back over to Blender, all you have to do is click paste and it's going to automatically paste those coordinates that you just selected into the four coordinate sections here. And now all we have to do is click import and it will import that section of map. Now before we do the OpenStreetMap data, I'm going to switch it over to the terrain and click import. This should only take a few seconds to import and you can see as I scroll out here, we have a super large version of our terrain. What we'll want to do to make the whole terrain visible is switch over to the view tab here and give it an end clip of something like a million or something really big so you don't have to worry about the view clipping. So I'm just switching over to the image overlay here and as I mentioned, if you have it set up in your add-ons with an access token to your map box account, you can go ahead and just import your satellite data right here. This might take just a few minutes to download the satellite imagery from the website and there it's finished and if I switched over to the textured view in the viewport shading here you can see that we have the terrain on our landscape and that's looking really cool already we have the terrain imported 
Everything's looking dope. So what you want to do real quick now is make sure you have this texture saved to your desktop somewhere. So all you need to do is split your window, open up a UV editor, select that image right here, overlay, and then just go image, save as, and make sure you stick that on your desktop somewhere. With that done now though, we can switch over to the OpenStreetMap add-on and start importing our building data. As you can see here, you have all kinds of other options to also import. Even in the free version, you can import some of the roadways and other vegetation and stuff. Other things that might be useful in certain scenes, but for our aerial landscape city, we actually don't need anything but the importing of buildings. So I can uncheck these for this tutorial. Here you can choose the default roof shape that you have flat or gabled. As I mentioned, the premium version offers many more options for this, but all we need to do is use flat for this tutorial. Here we have the height of the randomly generated buildings. You can change the level height right here, or you can change the amount that you see some of these different heights using the default number of heights. Here you can see that level four will be put at a weight of 10, whereas level five will be put at a level of 40. So it'll be four times the amount of buildings of level five than level four. The default settings though are pretty great here. So I'm just gonna leave them as it is. We don't have to worry about that. So all we need to do now is click import. This is where you sit back and wait for the data to import. Hopefully you didn't select too many buildings because it can take a while if you selected a large portion of city. I think I have a fairly small portion here, so it should only take a minute or so to import. And there you see, we have our buildings imported and it's looking really cool. It's lined up exactly with the satellite imagery. And this just makes life so easy for us to start creating some cool looking city renders. As you can see, I kind of missed a large portion of the larger buildings here, which I'm a little bummed about. So I might go ahead and select a larger chunk of San Francisco here and do the exact same process to get some larger buildings in my scene. So here I just repeated the process again and got some more of those larger buildings inside of the map this time. And that's looking really cool. We have a lot of data here to work with now. So as you continue to create cool artwork now, you might be wondering to yourself, how do I share this masterpiece now with the world? Well, a great answer to that question would be this video sponsor, Squarespace. If you have something cool let you do and you want to create an online presence to share this with the world, why not create a website, blog, or portfolio using Squarespace? They offer many great looking, easy to customize templates to get you started even if you don't know anything about web design and offer useful tools to help you grow your website like analytics, email campaigns, social media sharing, and much more. So head over to squarespace.com for a free trial and save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain using the coupon code CGGeek at checkout. So now it's time to start texturing. And I found that textures.com has the best site for all the building textures you'll need. Under buildings, you can see that we have all kinds of buildings to choose from. Most of them are gonna be in the high res setting here. You're gonna want some glass and office buildings for those real tall buildings. So go ahead and download some of these textures. You'll have 15 free credits on a free account. And then for some of the buildings lower down, the smaller buildings, you might wanna get some of the residential textures here. As you can see, some of these might work a little bit better for those smaller buildings. And then you'll even wanna go ahead and download some of their night textures here because some of the buildings that are kind of down in the shadow might already have their lights on. And we're gonna be using some of these textures to light those scenes in particular. So some of these are really cool and you wanna go ahead and download variety of all of these different types of building textures. Okay, so now on to texturing. As you can see, we have the satellite imagery texturing the ground, which is great. As you can see, if I zoom in here, you even have like some little cars and stuff on the streets, which just kind of fill in that blank area really well. And the cool thing is we can also use the satellite imagery here to texture the top of our buildings using the roof material here, which already separates the tops of all the buildings for us. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tab into edit mode and with the rough material here, I'm gonna click select and then I'm gonna hit Y on my keyboard and then I'm going to hit P and separate by selection. Here, if I tab out of edit mode now, you can see that we have all of the rooftops as a separate object. This is perfect because I'm gonna split my window now and add a separate material to the top of the roofs. Jumping over to the shader editor, we can click use nodes. And here, as a lot of you guys know, I love to use the node wrangler add-on to make sure that's enabled in the user preferences here. Having that enabled just gives you some shortcuts that make things a lot easier. For example, I can grab the principled shader here and go control T to open up a new texture. It'll automatically add a mapping node to it as well. And here all I need to do is click open now, then choose the satellite imagery that we saved out right there for the texture. So on both your building and your rooftop objects, now you're gonna wanna make sure you have both the UV maps deleted there. And now all I have to do is split my window here so I can open up the UV editor. And then with the rooftop object selected, I'm gonna hit seven on my number pad to go into top view, tab into edit mode and hit A to make sure everything is selected, then go U, 
project from view bounds. And as you can see here, all we need to do is scale and line up this texture now so it's lined up with the satellite imagery. This might take a little bit of fiddling around with, but you can get it pretty close if you're patient. As you can see, that's looking pretty lined up now. So all I need to do is close that off. And if I tab out of edit mode, you can see already in our viewport that the buildings now have the satellite imagery as the tops of them. And that's just gonna add a ton more detail. Now you can kind of tweak the color of the satellite imagery on these buildings a little bit by going Shift A and adding in a hue saturation node, dropping it right in there after the color node and taking the value down a little bit. I just found it looked a little bit better when I took the value down on that color. Okay, so now it's time for the building. So I'm gonna grab the buildings object, tab into edit mode. And we also need to unwrap these now. So I'm gonna go U and choose cube projection. As you can see, they're all unwrapped now and they're very tiny in our UV editor. But if I drop the cube projection setting up here, I can go ahead and scale these up a whole ton, really easy. So I'm just gonna make this about a 0.1. And as you can see, that actually might be too big. So I might go 0 0.02, just to make them a lot bigger, but not too much bigger. And I can always tweak the scale of these later. So now just jumping over to our material settings here and choosing the wall material, we're gonna click use nodes. And we're gonna start off by adding in a nice tileable building texture that won't look too bad on most of the buildings because this one's gonna probably be the texture that you see the most of. So here I'm just going shift A and adding in an image texture. The image texture is going to be building industrial texture, clicking open. And then I'm just gonna connect the color up to the base color. And as you can see here, it's already unwrapping those pretty nicely across our buildings but we might need to change the scale of this a little bit. I think they're a little bit smaller right now, so I'm gonna grab all of the buildings and go S and two to scale those up even bigger. Maybe scale them up even a little bit more by going S and 1.5. So there we have a basic building texture over all of our buildings. Of course, the mapping will have to be tweaked a little bit on some of these, but that gives us the base texture to work off of, as well as create a base material for all of these other buildings. So here I'm just gonna create a simple building material for this texture. I'm gonna go Shift A and add in a converter color ramp. Connect the color up to this. And then with the node regular add-on, all I need to do is go control shift to click on that texture so we can see what it's looking like. And here I'm just gonna tighten up the white and black values a bit. So I'm basically just isolating the windows from this building. I'm gonna take the black texture down a little bit so it's not 100% black. And this is going to be controlling the roughness of the buildings. So basically this will mean that the buildings here now will be sort of reflective, whereas the concrete and whatnot on the building will not be. We can also be super lazy and add in a vector bump node, just connecting the color ramp to the height of this and popping that into the normal socket on our principal shader node. Here I found it looked a little bit better inverted and then just take the strength down to about a 0.5 or so. So now that things are coming along nicely, you might wanna position your camera in your scene. I'm just gonna pick a view like this, grab my camera up here in the outliner and then go Alt Control Zero to snap the camera to my scene there. And as you can see, we don't see anything because the clipping also needs to be adjusted here. We're gonna give this a very large clipping distance so we don't have the city clipped at all. And as you can see right there, that doesn't look too bad. I'm gonna give it a focal length of about 45 and then just double tap R to line up my camera a little bit better and then click the middle mouse button to zoom it out. As you can see here, we have a city landscape that doesn't look too bad. Okay, so now for creating many more of these building textures, it's really simple. All we're gonna do is click the plus key in our material editor here. We're gonna grab that wall material that is now our building material. So we should probably name that something like building. And now all you need to do is click that four button to make it a duplicate of that material. And now you just choose a different texture here that you downloaded from textures.com. Then tabbing into edit mode, all you're gonna have to do is hover your key over the building you wanna change the material on, hit L to select the building, and and then just grab a handful of these buildings spread out throughout your scene. And after you've done that, as you can see I did here, all you need to do is click assign and that will put the new building texture on said building. But as I said, just go ahead and repeat this process multiple times now, creating different versions of your building material by opening up different textures here, grabbing different buildings spread out across your city landscape and assigning a new material to it. Voila! For some of the smaller buildings now, you're gonna to wanna to use that night texture that you downloaded and wanna create a slightly different variation of this building material for those. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing where I duplicate the building material. This time I'm opening up one of the building textures that we got under the night category. I'm gonna go ahead and assign this building texture to some of the small buildings down here so we can see exactly the changes that we're making to it. And as you can see, this is a really cool looking texture, but what we can do to make this even cooler is if I go Shift A and add in a color 
RGB curves. We can go kind of connect this right up to that. And all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull this curve way to the darker end. So we have just the light of the building sort of visible and everything else is pretty black in our scene here. And now what you can do is connect this as the emission strength on your principal shader. So if I go to this now, you can see that these buildings are gonna be emitting some light, which will look really cool in our render. So this is gonna add some really cool lighting effects to the streets of San Francisco by going ahead and creating a few more variations of that texture and assigning it to some of the smaller buildings here. And here I have it now with many more textures added across our buildings. I think I have about 10 different variations of my building texture around. And what you wanna do at this point is start cleaning up some of the UV texturing on some of these buildings that are gonna be nice and obvious. For this, you're just gonna tab into edit mode, hit L on the building you want to adjust, and then the UV editor here, you can just hit G and then hold shift to kind of slightly adjust this texture until you can see you have it lined up a little bit nicer on your building so there's no weird tiling issues going on. Now it's time to start setting up a render for cycles. So you're gonna wanna make sure that you've changed from EV over to cycles here now, and you're gonna wanna open up an HDR map. So here I'm just gonna jump over to the shader editor and then switch from object to world. Then over in the world settings, you're just going to grab the color button there, change it over to environment texture and open up an HDR. Here I'm gonna use a cool HDR from HDR Haven that I'll link in the description below so you guys can download it. Go ahead and open that up. Then you can select the HDR and go control T to add in a vector mapping node to it. Then you're gonna wanna switch to rendered view so you can kind of line up the HDR here for your scene. And here I just played around with the rotation settings to get a nice horizon line with the HDR at the right lighting angle that I was looking for. Here are the specific settings that I came up to rotate the HDR in the angle that I like for the scene if you guys wanna copy them here. And then we just need to work in the color management settings a little bit. So I'm jumping over to the render properties and we just need to kind of expose this HDR right for the scene. So scrolling all the way down to the bottom of the render properties here, under color management, I'm gonna wanna give it a look of a nice high contrast. And then I'm going to wanna take the gamma down to darken the scene quite a bit and take the exposure up. So taking the gamma all the way down to about a 0.35 and then cranking the exposure up nice and bright to about a 1.4. Since we have the building rooftops already as a separate material, that's gonna make it really easy to add some extra detail to those rooftops. So here I just used some basic cubes along with some textures off of textures.com to create some random junk to put on top of those buildings. Basically just like, air vents and AC units, as you can see here. These things are literally nothing more than a cube with a texture mapped on them. There's all kinds of AC unit textures available on textures.com and all you need to do to put them on a cube like this is to go U, cube projection, slap your texture onto the principal shader. And then under your UV settings here, all you need to do is grab those individual faces by switching to face select there. And just adjust the scale and rotation of these to kind of position them over that texture. For the top one here, you might just wanna grab it and scale it down and put it over here so you don't have any of the vent on that one. Little chunks of AC unit that's not detailed in the slightest, but when we use these in a particle system now, really tiny on top of those building tops, they'll add some extra detail. Then with all your junk created, all you're gonna do is box select them all and go control G to add them to a group. Then you can jump over to your particle settings here, create a new particle system, and we're gonna choose hair, advanced. We're gonna give it about 30,000 of these, so there's a whole bunch of them. You can choose rotation, and we're gonna change this to the object X location. And then you're gonna scroll down and under render as, you're gonna choose render as collection. You're just gonna choose the collection you just made. It might just be titled collection here. And then all you're gonna do is adjust the scale until you scale all that random junk up and then give it about a 0.5 randomness scale as well. I'm gonna take the scale down just a little bit smaller, but that little bit of detail will go a long way in adding some more realism to your scene. And then for the final sort of atmospheric cloud effect here, I did this using two different methods. One of them is super cheaty, but actually can give you pretty good looking results if you don't go too crazy with it. And that is just going to textures.com, searching for clouds. And if you scroll down a little bit, you'll see we have some alpha masked clouds here. Now you don't wanna pick any of these highly detailed clouds because these will look pretty fake. But if you choose some of the more wispy clouds here and just go ahead and download some of these, and then over inside of Blender, what you can do is if you just shift, right click your cursor over there, and then go shift A and add in an image. Images as planes, you wanna make sure this add-on is enabled in the user preferences as well. And then all you have to do is go ahead and choose one of these cool cloud textures to import. Then you can just scale it up a bit bigger. Now what you might wanna do is tab into edit mode, hit control R and scroll wheel and add a few cuts to it. Then go control R and put a cut across the middle. Then if you hit O to enable proportional editing, you can move some of these vertices around a little bit, adjusting the size of the proportional editing with the scroll wheel and just give this a little bit more of a three dimension. So it's a little less looking like a plane and a little bit more looking like a cloud. Very cheaty. And as you can see, just doing something like that gives it a little bit better of an angle. So if you're looking at it from the side a little bit, it doesn't look quite as flat. And then you can just right click and choose shade smooth. 
Now we need to set up a very quick and basic material for this cloud. Jumping over to the shader editor here. Here we just deleted the principled shader and replaced it with a basic diffuse shader. So I can go shift A and add in an add shader, then add in a translucent shader. Connect this to the bottom socket of the add shader and connect the color to the color of the translucent shader. This will really help kind of fake that volumetric effect using this cloud texture and it will give you much faster render times than actually trying to render volumetrics inside of Blender right now. Then I'm going shift A and adding in a mix shader dropping it right at the end here and then going shift A and adding in a transparent shader. This is going to be connected to the top socket on our mix shader. I'm going to take the alpha from this texture and use this as the factor. Now I'm going to play around with the alpha a little bit on this texture by going shift A and adding in a converter map range. This is a new node inside of Blender, fairly recently added. I'm just going to drop it in right there so it's between the alpha and the mix shader. And what I can do here is I can basically adjust how much of the cloud I want to be visible. First off by adjusting the maximum. So I'm going to take this all the way down to about a 0.3 or 0.2. So we have a much softer looking cloud. Then I'm going to change it from linear to smoother step right here. And then just by increasing the from maximum, I'm going to crank this up to something higher like a two. And as you can see, this just makes the clouds a bit more fady and a little less obviously like copied and pasted. So go ahead and add those clouds to our scene now. All you need to do is put your cursor in the center of the scene here. Go shift A, add in a plane, scale that plane up really huge and place it just below the tops of the buildings. You might want to tab into edit mode and right click, choose subdivide and go ahead and give us about 10 cuts right there. That will work just fine. Then all you want to do is go ahead and add a subsurf modifier to that plane and then also go ahead and add a displacement modifier to that plane. You're going to go ahead and click new texture and then click the little texture button there to jump over to the texture settings where you're just going to change this over to clouds. And as you can see, you get a very crazy looking result there. But if you jump back to your modifiers tab and take the strength way down, something small like a 0.2, and then you can play around with the mid-level to adjust the height of your clouds. Here I'm just going new particle system, choosing hair, render as collection, and just as before, if you made a few different variations of your clouds, you want to grab them all and go control G to make a group out of them. Once again, you can go ahead and choose the clouds then that you created as that group. All you're gonna to wanna to do is crank the scale up something nice and large. Then you'll wanna make sure advanced is chosen, rotation is chosen, and then you can just change the phase here until all of the clouds are sort of facing towards your camera angle that you're going for. You can give it a little bit of random phase at that point. Then it's just a matter of picking the number of clouds that you want. I think I went with about 2,500 in my scene. Play around the scale a little bit as well until you find a number that you're pretty happy with. With these clouds added, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that under your render properties, under light pass, you increase the transparent bounces here up to something very large, like 128. You also wanna make sure that you uncheck show emitter in your particle settings so you don't have that plane rendering in your scene. Okay, so the last thing that I did to add a little bit more atmosphere to our scene is with our camera selected, you're gonna to wanna to enable mist. Then you're gonna to wanna to go to your render layers here and also make sure that mist is enabled. Then you're gonna to wanna to go to your environment settings here and you can change the mist pass the start and end point as you can see since I have such a large scene here I have it start at 250 meters and go all the way to 2500 meters but with that setup you should be ready to go ahead and render your first render of your city landscape and that's a pretty cool looking render plus we can make it even cooler with just a little bit of compositing here real quick now jumping over to the compositing tab along the top all you need to do to add in that mist that we rendered out is to go shift a add in a converter color ramp and we're just going to connect the mist to this color ramp as you can see here. Then if I control shift click it, you can see that we have our mist. I found it look better if I change it from linear to B spline here. Then you can just pull the black value forward a little bit here, take the white value, and this is gonna be basically the strength of it. So I found taking it down to about a 0.5 to look pretty good. And then you're just gonna go shift A, add in a color mix node, connect the color ramp as a factor, and the bottom socket here will be the color of the mist added. If I use the M key to mute that node with it and without it, we add a lot of volumetric fog-like effect to our scene. So for the color, I'm just gonna use the eyedropper here and pick a bit of the sky in the background there. And then I'm just going to take the value down a little bit on that as well. And the last thing you can do is quick throw some glare nodes up as you can see here. Give it a few more iterations. And as you can see, you just get a little bit of that star effect on some of these lights along the bottom. And I thought that looked kind of cool. Change the angle offset to about a 45 degree. You can take the threshold down if you want a little bit more of that effect. And then you can duplicate it, drop it in there one more time, and this time change it to fog glow. And this will just allow those lights to light up. You might want to take the mix down a little bit by going about a negative 0.4 to make it a little less strong of an effect. 
But there is our finished city render, guys. You can do any sort of color grading you want over the top of this now. I'll leave it up to you. But that's the finished scene. I hope you guys had fun with this tutorial. Used it maybe as sort of a distraction while you're at home with nothing else to do. So uh, yeah, that's going to do it for me. Thanks so much for watching. If you create something cool, post it in the comments. If you like the video, let me know with a like. And I'll see you all in a future Blender tutorial. Bye-bye!